When I think about a firearm, and I think about the attributes that are most important to me with regard to that specific firearm, whether it be to buy one or to work on one, the trigger is near, if not at the very top of the list. Gavin Gear here from UltimateReloader.com. In this video, I want to introduce you to the world's most powerful trigger profiling tool, and that is the Trigger Scan. That's right, here in the Ultimate Reloader Shop, I now have the Trigger Scan trigger profiling device and software, and I'll have to say it's amazing. Now, typically, guys will either use a peak force gauge, which is a very useful tool to have, or they'll wax poetic about a trigger or both. You know, they'll talk about how it, the trigger breaks like a glass rod. Or they'll talk about minimal creep and talk about the trigger you know, with descriptive words, but not with data. And that's what the trigger scan enables you to do. So in this video, I wanna introduce you to the trigger scan and I wanna do a comparison of two different Glocks that I own to show you just how sensitive and just how amazing this tool is. Let's get straight into it. So this is the trigger scan. The trigger scan has this fire armrest that's sort of a base which various things attach to, including the rests, the instrument itself, and there are a lot of different options with regard to how you can support the firearm under test and, and the different types of adjustments that you can make to get everything aligned perfectly, everything supported perfectly, and then to go ahead and do a test. The instrument itself can be used standalone without the rest, and you can actually actuate the sensor arm here, which is stepper motor driven and is connected to the brain. There's also a lock time sensor, which is optional, which I've got. I've got one for handguns here and, and one for long guns. So that measures the elapsed time between the sear falling and the fire pin hitting the primer for the cartridge that would be loaded in the firearm under test. So there's quite a few things we can do. We have also have it connected to the PC over this RS-232 cable here which I'm also using a USB to serial adapter available very cheaply on Amazon so that I can get the serial data stream to the PC and to the trigger scan software. So mounting a gun is really easy and, and the two guns that I'm going to take a look at here are my Glock 20 and my Glock 17. The Glock 20 has a factory trigger. The Glock 17 has had quite a few modifications made by its prior owner and one of those is a ghost three and a half pound disconnector, a bunch of polishing, some titanium parts. I'm not even sure what all has been done, but I do know it's awesome and we'll be able to visualize the difference between the factory trigger and the Glock 17 trigger here with the trigger scan device. So I've got this all adjusted. What we do is carefully insert the firearm. Of course, the very first thing we do is check to make sure that we're unloaded, drop the slide, insert it into the supports and then there's this quick access support here for the right hand side of in this case the slide. Now the firearm is firmly held in the trigger scan and we can actually run a scan. And the last thing we need to do before running a test is to insert the firing pin sensor which is going to help us measure lock time. The rubber band just applies very gentle pressure backwards between the sensor itself and the firing pin strike area. The clamp helps complete the circuit for the measurement. Okay, over to the PC we've got Trigger Scan 4.0. This is the software we're going to use to run the test. We have a profile going in, in here with the test, the active test that we're running. We can go ahead and create a new run. I'm just going to push back on the firearm every time to make sure it's firmly seated against the rear rest and we'll go ahead and run our test. So you can see right here we have a profile in just seconds and the data comes in in real time. 7.263 pounds peak force, 3.5 seconds, milliseconds lock time. And to show you how precise this instrument is, we're going to go ahead and run this same exact test again. And so for a retest scenario, you just remove the firearm from the device, rack the slide, We're going to insert our side tensioner there, firing pin sensor, and then if we're very careful to be repeatable, give it a 
a rearward push. We can go ahead and create a new test for our duplicate run. And then once we get confirmation, hit go. And you can see here, incredibly precise, very repeatable results, very happy with that. But how does this factory Glock 20 compare to my raced out Glock 17? I think we should find out. Okay, so this is the Glock 17. It's got some mods. It's got a, a Ghost three three and a half pound disconnector, titanium parts, a bunch of polishing. The guy I bought it from did a really great job with it. I shot it once and I had to have it. So this awesome trigger, let's see how it compares to the factory Glock 20. Each time we change firearms, we need to make sure that we're still firmly held in place. It looks pretty good. Nothing's rocking and rolling there. Okay, firing pin sensor, similar deal here. And we should be ready to roll. One last push backwards. Again, we can create a new test here with a new run. And when we get the confirmation, hit go. Okay, so this shows that we have a little bit of a blip at the beginning, which is kind of interesting. And then much lower forces. The peak force is 3.8 pounds compared to 7.2. So that shows quite a bit of a difference. And let's go ahead and retest this one one more time. Go ahead and rack the slide again back into the instrument block time sensor we need to have metallic contact with our clamp and then the tensioning rubber band a little bit of a push back and we can go ahead and add yet another test okay and again, it looks like we're pretty much overlapping the line here. Totally amazing. The one thing I'm noticing here is I had a 14 millisecond lock time the first time, and I think I did not have the firing pin sensor perfectly centered. So let's go ahead and run this one more time, just to be sure. Okay. You can see how fast this can be, kind of once you get into the groove. Okay, this time we're going to make sure that the firing pin sensor is centered, give it a little bit of a push back, and a third test with the raced out Glock 17. Let's see what happens. Again, remarkable overlap in the lines here, and because I had the firing pin sensor centered, we have 3.8 milliseconds. Very consistent between the two Glocks. Super interesting. So that pretty much covers semi-autos, but what about that other category of handgun, revolvers? Now revolvers, of course, are a little bit different because they've got double action and they've got single action. Well, these are both gonna work on the trigger scan with a couple minor notes. Let's take a look at the trigger on this Smith & Wesson 329 PD lightweight 44 Magnum backpacker. I took a few moments and I got my rests set up so that they're adjusted for the dimensions of this particular firearm. And I will note that we can't use the firing pin sensor when we're testing double action because the cylinder rotates and that sensor would be in the way. But we can in single action. Let's run the double action test first. So I've got trigger scan back up. I went into the scale menu and changed the force range and the travel range. I got a new profile set up here. We have an active test. So again, with some slight rearward force on the gun to make sure that it's completely seated there. We need to do a run, confirmation, hit play. Okay, so this trigger scan obviously looks very different compared to the semi-auto Glock scans we had. In fact, it almost looks like a diesel torque curve compared to a regular four cycle gas 
torque curve. It's very kind of flat, sort of constant force as we're revolving the cylinder. Now, we can also go ahead and cock the trigger. Now we can use our firing pin sensor. Now, I did have to wrap a little bit of electrical tape here. We can also use a bushing if we had one so that it's perfectly centered in the larger bore. Again, we're gonna use the rubber band to, for some slight rearward pressure. Okay, that looks about right. Make sure that we're good and centered here. Complete the circuit with the clamp. Okay. And now we can run another trigger scan with single action mode. I'm gonna add another test. We'll see what this looks like. So it's gonna automatically adjust where the force starts. So we can see it's shifted way to the left. But now we have a four and a half pound peak trigger force compared to our 11.88 peak trigger force with double action. And that's why I like revolvers. They've got that great single action that you can use there. And again, we we're able to use the lock time sensor. It's got an eight and a half millisecond lock time, which is quite a bit longer than the, the Glock, which makes sense because <laughs> that hammer has to swing quite a bit further. So we can use the trigger scan for revolvers. We can use the trigger scan for semi-autos. You might be asking, what about long guns, shotguns and rifles? Absolutely, and I'm gonna cover that in a subsequent video. So, what's the net out of all this? The net out is, if you're a gun enthusiast, if you're a journalist, if you're a gunsmith, if you're a gun school, and you really need to know everything about your trigger, you absolutely need a trigger scan, and I actually can help get you a deal straight through Dvorak Instruments to get a discount if you're a non-commercial customer, like a school or like a private gunsmith or like a journalist. So make sure you click on the link below. If you wanna see more trigger scan action, make sure you subscribe to Gap and Tube. And if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget, there's gonna be follow-up videos here. and We're gonna have a lot of different scans, a lot of fun with this. So until next time, happy shooting and happy reloading.